Hello Optimizers. I made this somewhat autobiographical slideshow a year ago for Lunch and Learn at my company. However, if a presentation is made and yet no one on the collective internet saw it, why did I spend this time making it? Let's get started. So the story time will have to start from the humble year 2020, when we become so fearful of people coughing in public that we had to all work from home. I was horrendously addicted to Genshin Impact, and I had a great idea to, um, hang on, what's Genshin Impact? Genshin Impact is an online video game that works on multiple platforms, it's a cross between a lot of genres, and because it's such a diverse mix of genres, a lot of active players, including me. Hang on, let me tell you more about Genshin. Although it claims to be free, it time gates players in how much loot they can receive, which can artificially accelerate by paying real-world buckaroos or in-game currency. Everything, including the characters, weapons, gears, are from randomized loot boxes. All the gears have stats that are completely randomized. This is an example of an artifact. It has four randomly generated numbers in the center that can randomly get better as you put more resources into it. If you just play the game over a period of time, you get hundreds of these bloody things. Each character can equip five of them, and the sum of their numbers have a direct correlation to how strong your characters are. Each of your character stats goes into this crazy formula system, which, depending on how you play the game, changes how much damage you do. And this leads me to the most important part of this presentation, and that's dopamine. What produces dopamine? Big numbers. The bigger, the more screen space they occupy, the more dopamine. Get where I'm going with this? We need a system that accounts for all the permutations of combinations of randomly generated gear, so that once it gets fed into this formula system, players can get the biggest number to produce the most dopamine. On my yellow brick road to better numbers, I look to the community to see what's available. If any of you ever get sucked into the gaping black holes of gaming, like WoW, EVE Online, or even Cookie Clicker, you know what the status quo is. Spreadsheets. Originally, you may just be for reference, then you find yourself more and more unwilling to play the game without spreadsheets occupying your second monitor. Eventually, you spend more time in spreadsheets than playing the game. They're easily accessible, require minimal skill to put together, Everyone, including your dog, has a proficiency in Microsoft Excel in their resume, but I have some very um, valid and non-opinionated criticisms against spreadsheets. Another option that is open to me is to create a web app. Here, I could create a project that's easily accessible. I could spend more time polishing it to make it prettier, expand my programming knowledge, and most importantly, it's not a spreadsheet. With that decision made, I started this journey towards despair. Here is my five-step process to destroy spreadsheets. I did not write this list originally, but I wrote this while I was working on this presentation, so give me some suspension of disbelief. I'm only using this as a narrative device. Standardize and automate data imports. This was a pretty easy problem to solve. Let the user upload the screenshot post-process it using some sort of proprietary algorithm I wrote over a weekend, feed this through an open source OCR engine, get you some numbers, easy peasy. Then I published a standard after much discussion with the community. Eventually, the dingy duct tape screenshot solution seems insufficient against people who have hundreds of screenshots to upload. Some developers create scanners, which are bot programs that basically manipulate your mouse in-game, take screenshots, parse those screenshots, and spit out a file in a standardized file format. Since scanners manipulate your game, they have some inherent controversy and distrust in the community. Since most of them are built for PC, mobile and PlayStation gamers aren't able to use them. Someone then created a web-based scanner that can parse through frames in a video file. A user just needs to record themselves going through their inventory, and they can generate a compatible data file. Needless to say, standardization and automation of data inputs. Check. Step two, robust formula engine. When I initially started this project, all the formulas that I model in the game are written explicitly with the assistance of some helper functions. Because I'm a responsible engineer, I also show my work. So I accompany each number with a printout of the formula text. However, each character will have 20 or so formulas. There were around 30 characters in the game. Because it is modeled after a video game, things get more and more complex as you try to make a formula multi-state. Eventually, some formula becomes something like this monstrosity with hundreds of formula to keep track of and maintain, making formulas incredibly difficult to verify. There were some game mechanics, like one character changing another character's stats using a percentage of his own stats that were pretty impossible to show her into the system. This system was unsustainable. 
forced to go back to the drawing boards, I had recruited the help of one of my university friends, who should be busy working on his PhD, effectively nerd sniping him the problem. You might have noticed the title change. I'm going to try to keep things relatively simple, but if things get too complicated, here's a boat. This is called a wave rider, a little boat you use in game to ride around the world and explore islands and such. It's also the namesake of our new formula engine. Wave rider is influenced by TensorFlow, specifically used directed acidic graphs to represent formulas. Each piece of a formula would be represented using nodes, but denoting using different nodes representation, be able to have the nodes look up dynamic data, we have a very flexible system that can model the intricacies of the in-game mechanics. Then by using graph operations like flattening and duplication and graph pruning algorithms, we could optimize a graph for repeated calculations, even under different input data. Once we have established a mathematical model, we can work on converting all the data sheets into this new format. And with just quote unquote, a little change, we converted the whole system over several months. It was spitting out beautiful, correct numbers, and as a core design feature, it can traverse the graphs to generate a concise, detailed formula breakdown. So here's another check mark for my domination over those disgusting spreadsheets. Wait, we're still on step two? What? Quick recap. We have a way to get all the user account data we have a formula engine that can do math dynamically very fast. You might be wondering, what algorithm do you use to determine which combination of equip gear is the best? It's brute force. Game mechanics are incredibly dynamic. Things like linear descent, even with multi-star, is not guaranteed to have a global maxima without providing a formula system. It's a perfectly convex. So one thing we could do is to use all the power available. Dispatching a web worker queue with as many web workers as possible, get some CPU fans going. While creating a sizable carbon footprint, the user is presented with this dopamine-inducing loading bar. So was that step done? Give me that check mark. At this point, quite a lot of people have messaged me saying they use the website more than playing the game. So I guess achievement get. So since I started, I pulled 18 hour days. I've broken over three keyboards, now out of rage, just kind of general overuse. And I have a sizable following of users and the budding community but this was unmanageable for this one man. The only way to get all this done is to clone me or, or get more people to help. I guess that's a more viable option. The project would not be where it is today without people that help and support me. And I think finding the right people is very important to get the job done. This is just a core team. All of them are vastly more overqualified than I am. There's an additional moderator who helped with the EU time zone. We have pretty much every hemisphere covered. We have a theory crafter who helped us verify the math and connect us to the spreadsheet community. And we recently included a translator who helped us coordinate translations and clean up all our text. Check mark all around. On to step five of the spreadsheet domination plan. Actually, I spent too much time on the formula engine and the systems just kind of run out of time on this one. Uh, I tried to keep the UI sensible and intuitive. But there's just too many features, too many buttons for the UI not to look like an airplane cockpit. But since my goal is to look better than spreadsheets and the grading system is arbitrary and I get to decide, I still get a check mark. Here's my revised five step plan to destroy spreadsheets. It's kind of straight from my original plan, but I seem to have kept on track. Number six, be popular. So this kind of caught me by surprise. I app I wrote because I didn't want to use spreadsheets just kind of randomly blew up. I wasn't actively advertising it. I didn't know SEO optimization. It just spread by word of mouth. This kind of changed me from just a random programmer to a community figure, someone who other people knew by name. So I started a YouTube channel that hosts tutorials, which is also a platform for me to add SpongeBob memes into my video thumbnails. I also started a community of other developers that uh, make tools for the game and even show up in community podcasts with some of those developers. So even though this wasn't part of the list, why not have a check mark? Anyways, I made a simple website after my uh, five, I guess six step program helped me get a full stack job. This was a token slide added at the end of a presentation to both drum up engagement, make sure people are still paying attention. Since I'm recording this on YouTube, makes no sense. Let's, let's move on. Looking back at this presentation, this seems like an interesting way to see what happened over a year of growth. 
looking at some of the images they're putting here, the numbers have really changed. Our uh, Genshin Optimizer Discord has doubled in size. Our uh, code repo had an explosive blow up. And we had a lot more people contributing to things around the site. But as always, we always want uh, more developers and contributors since our ambition will always grow faster than our abilities. Remember the Wave Rider engine? The second iteration we've named Pando, named after the world's largest tree that seemed to like to disguise itself as a forest. We also had a ton of work over the optimization process as well, by people much more smart and much more qualified than me, if I may add. Let's look towards the future. There's so much more I want to do with this project. This is just the excerpt from our roadmap. In just the first four months of this year, a lot of items have already been checked off the list. We were able to beat Genshin to release a new loadouts feature. We added the TC solver to finally release the rest of the spreadsheet copers from their suffering. And we're working on an artifact upgrade optimizer that will help players narrow down optimal upgrades. We're also working on adding a formal backend to the system. A lot of the exciting things we can do there. And we'll use our handle calculation engine and yes, to answer your question, we are working on a Star Rail Optimizer. Due to the limitation of volunteer developer time, it's been somewhat slow. This is probably a good segue into the fact that we, like all community-driven projects, need more developers. We're desperate enough to put ads on our website asking for help. Okay, for real though, this is the end of the presentation. If you want to find out more about Genshin Optimizer, feel free to join our Discord. This role there you can acquire that lets you see all the development in progress. If you're interested to contribute or try out the latest work in progress features. Did you know I've been streaming on Twitch every Friday around 5 p.m. Eastern Time? Things I gotta do to keep me playing Genshin. Drop by if you wanna ask me about Genshin Optimizer, software development, or just keep me awake during those boring Genshin story quests. You can also support me at Patreon for... um. Wait, what the hell happened to the Patreon icon? It was a line in the circle, now it's just like a black blob? Who did this? Um, as always, for more information on how to use Genshin Optimizer, there's a YouTube playlist full of tutorials. I know some of them are outdated because we keep updating the UI, but I think they should mostly hold up. You can also find all links and stuff in the description. Alright, thanks for your time. Bye!